Morning guys, um, back again real quick one. I um, I just haven't out, had any time to work on any projects recently, so got stuck on the weekend uh, helping out a friend whose patio was falling down, so we haven't had a chance to do much else. Um, but I saw this morning that this, I'll, I'll pop it up, I see the AC coupled versus DC coupled solar things um, rearing its head again, and once again there's all these, you know, you get these heroes in the comments that like to be, oh, well it's inefficient or it's this and that and rah rah rah. And they mix terms, right? They mix they mix terms like cost effectiveness and efficiency and whatnot, and it's it's misleading in my opinion. So I've, I've made videos about this before, so I figured today I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it again, but I'm gonna try and do a better job this time than what I've done before. So uh, stay tuned if you want to hear that. Um, in the meanwhile, thanks to the guys who have subscribed, thanks for the comments, um, heaps and heaps of guys are chatting in the comment section uh getting lots of information about other people's kits and and, and the various different ways that people have implemented their off-grid solar um and it's awesome so um we appreciate that but i'll uh let, let's let's get into this let's get into this um ac coupled solar thing for like the 50 billionth time um happy to talk about it because I, I really like you know I, I enjoy the idea of the ac coupled solar so i'll pop this up on the screen so you can see it we've got two different scenarios there will be a third scenario, but for the moment we've, we're going to talk about the, the two main scenarios. The first one is direct DC charging, right? So we use our we use our MPPTs, we get some voltage in at a higher voltage than what we want, and we, we reduce it down to the battery's voltage or, or a couple of volts above it and, and power flows into the battery, right? Awesome. The, 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 the benefit of that is you're directly charging the battery, there's, there's very little energy conversions going on, it's just some gate switching that are controlling the flow of current down to the battery. Like, makes total sense. Yep. The, the second one is AC coupled solar. Now, with AC coupled solar, you're taking in DC and then you're turning it back into AC and you're using the AC lines as a common bus to connect your PV inverters with your battery inverters. The battery inverter is then responsible for flowing that power into the battery at the, at the correct voltage. Right? And you go, shit, there's energy conversions in that. That doesn't, that, that doesn't sound like it's very efficient. You can see that we do it. We've got five of them on the wall over there and three of them are currently uh, being used to charge the batteries. Um, so what are the pros and cons of that and, and why would you do some things uh, instead of others, right? And like you can clearly see that when you take DC and you go to AC that there, there's going to be a loss there, right? We, we all expect that there's going to be a loss. But the reason that they do it uh, is because of the cost effectiveness at scale. So we, we can see clearly that going DC to DC um, it is the most direct route and therefore that is probably the most efficient route but that doesn't because it's efficient doesn't mean it's cost effective and they're two two completely different outcomes right so let, let's go with the dc stuff the pros of the dc stuff generally is you've got low energy loss during the during the conversion right you're taking a dc source you're reducing the voltage down to, to match your batteries and, and you're and you're pumping into the batteries um, there's there's some mitigation in that usually for uh, like panel shading so I'll give you an example this 250 by 100 is three groups of four so it's a it's a 4s 3p solar panel arrangement this one is 3s 4p right so if one of those sets of panels got shaded cool we, we, we lose that group of four because the others would be at a high voltage nothing wrong with that um, that gives us a little bit of mitigation right so that's that's the, one of the pros right now the con is the size of this cable that comes out of here is actually quite large and if there was significant voltage drop from this to the battery you'd have an issue so that the cable has got to be quite quite big this must be installed close to the battery um, where they don't have to be um, so we'll, we'll get we'll get to that one next. The other thing we've got to watch out for is the voltage drop. So this is going to this is installed close to the battery to ensure that the 58 volts that's coming out of this actually makes it to the batteries. Right? This is normal in DIY sets. You wouldn't you wouldn't remotely install these. I, I don't I don't think I've ever seen these a significant distance away from the battery. Like I'm, I'm sure someone's done it somewhere, and there's there's been a reason for it. But what you have a tendency to do is bring in the solar wires, which are higher voltage, um, to these, so that the, the panels can be somewhere else. But that again, and when they're grouped in small groups, um, in in the case of this one, uh, there's four groups that could be potentially outputting 41 amps each. And because it's an MPPT, sometimes it actually drops below that and, and pulls in more amps than what the panels are generally rated for. So we might have 40 amps coming in over over the solar cable, which means we've got to use larger solar cables. So we've used six millimeter square just to be safe. Um, but on the 
on those ones, they can use two millimeter square or even four millimeter square wires, right? So we'll jump to the next one. So in, with AC, with AC coupled charging, not only uh, is there less of these being used in the world, these things are not being produced on the same scale as those things, because you know all the homes get them. Um, so they're, they're mass produced in a way that, that makes them cheaper for the amount of power that they produce, right? Yeah, so some of these inverters might, might be as high as 800 volt strings, right? And so in the morning or in low light conditions, because you've got so many of them, you might make up the difference and you might be able to start charging when, when these might not necessarily be able to charge. Now, like, this, this is still significantly higher voltage than, than the battery, so that's generally not going to be the case. If you had some of the smaller ones, maybe the 75s, the 75 volt in 10 amp out ones that might not be the case but but generally speaking the ac coupled inverters are a significantly high throughput um well they, they operate at a significantly high voltage um which means that you can your low light performance or your early morning performance can could be improved um the problem is that when you string a bunch of panels together like that if you shade one the whole string goes right and bear in mind that these things are made for large scale deployments so so you know, the only way that you can mitigate that is uh, is, is just run more more inverters, right? So that, that's definitely on the on the con side. Um, the other thing is that you need additional hardware in order to be able to change charge a battery. So there's a charger in the inverter, and it's the charger in the inverter that does the charging. It's not the actual it's not the actual PV inverter. The PV inverter um, is just connecting via an AC bus to to the battery inverter, and the battery inverter is what does all the charging. So why why do people do that? right and that they don't do it because of off-grid stuff right or diy off-grid stuff you, that's why it's not common what, what it's built for is for the grid provider more than anything you can put in a communal battery and you can have solar on multiple people's houses and then and then you can drag that into a communal battery um so it's it's all about the microgrid not necessarily about the diy community um it's it's about servicing houses and and over over geographically separated locations that's where those things shine right they don't have to be installed next to the battery. They can be at a distance from the battery, provided that the voltage drop you know, over the AC cables isn't significant. Um, they could be somewhere else. So you might have batteries on your house, for example, and you, know, you, you put the PV inverter on your shed and it might be 100 metres away, but that's okay because it can, it can make up the difference. It will backfeed into the grid regardless. So um, you know, like generally, you don't see AC coupled stuff in, in DIY solar situations because you put your charge mechanisms with your batteries. So this makes the most sense in, a, in an off-grid, particularly DIY situation, because it's the most direct charging. But what about the direct use power? So like if we get if, if we just jump back down to the the MPPT itself has got a high converge, energy conversion rate, right? And that's great for charging. But the Fronius inverter, sorry, the Victron inverter isn't as efficient as those inverters. It's close, but not quite the same, right? So when you're, when you're charging the battery, this is the most efficient way to charge the battery. It's not necessarily the most efficient way to directly use the power. So you've got two situations here. If you've got loads during the day, then actually the best place for their charge source to come from, the most efficient way to get that and, and directly use it as AC is those not these and that's the part that gets overlooked everybody says oh no it's not efficient you need to you know you, you need to use um, mppts and directly charge the battery sure charging the battery that is the most efficient way to do it but it's not the most efficient way to directly use the power so that's where we get to um like scenario c where in my opinion you should have both because these ones can directly charge the battery dc dc and those ones the power can be used directly by the AC loads in the house. And then any excesses, you're gonna spend a little bit of, you're gonna lose a little bit of your efficiency to get into here. But when it comes to, and I said this at the beginning of the video, the difference between cost effectiveness and efficiency is they are more cost effective, but they're not efficient at charging the battery. These things are very efficient at charging the battery, but they're not cost effective when it comes to direct use, right? Like you're gonna pay more for the cable install, um, you're more sensitive to voltage drop. They give you geographical separation. You can you can install them elsewhere. You could even install them on other properties if you if you were to build a small community microgrid, for example. 
um, and, and one person in the in the town could have batteries or there could be a communal battery and then everybody can feed into it so so there's a bit of flexibility in the AC stuff that you do not get from the DC stuff I thought I had another slide here talking about that no doesn't look like it that's okay so yeah that's this that's the scenario that um, like people overlook they they are thinking if you do what we do which is we're, we're trying to make the most out of our battery we're trying to get like the the shortest payback window possible so during the day when everything can run for free and we don't have to cycle these batteries we delay start all of our washing machines and we delay start the dishwasher and it runs when we're not here um, and, and while it can be operated for free and that puts less load on these batteries so they're not getting cycled so regularly you hope that that means they're going to last longer but you know that may not be the case um, and we just directly use the power and, and you know that's that's the difference, I think, um, between people, you know, people are only thinking about charging the battery, but if you're DIY and you're off-grid, you're not just charging your battery, you're also using the power, and the power is also mission critical for you, so spreading your workload out across multiple MPVTs and multiple inverters at the same time, um, it makes, makes sense, right, because you've got some resiliency, some redundancy in what you're doing. Uh, like just going all DC, yeah, sure, if, if your setup is small enough, go ahead and do that it makes it makes total sense it's also stuff that you you generally don't need legislative sort of permission to do you don't need to have a license or anything like that so yeah it makes makes total sense to do that if that's if that's the way you're going but given that you can buy those things i bought those out of the paper in australia we got like gum tree um i suppose it's like craigslist i guess uh they, they're 300 dollars for three kilowatts and they all always came with panels i cannot buy one of these for that much and there's a charger in this thing. So the charger in this thing's not getting used unless unless you've got some source of energy to, to use it anyway. So this thing can throw out 140 amps. Like hundreds, that's 5.8 kilowatts, 5.8 kilowatts. What's that, like a two and a half, just close to three. That one's two-ish. So that thing is actually my biggest charge mechanism. I can't plug in all five of those because it overcomes the power that this inverter is able to deal with. But um, yeah. Like, I, I totally support the idea of, of AC coupled solar and it, and it sort of gives me the shits a little bit when I see people getting in the comments and, and then they bark things out, right? It's important to understand the nuances of it um, and it's really important for people to understand that, hey, it's not going to charge the battery as efficiently as these are. But that's not the same thing as cost effectiveness. Anyway, I'll stop waffling on. I'll catch you guys in the next one.